Life can sometimes turn upside down in a matter of minutes, both for the better and for the worst. I have waited a little bit to tell this story until I felt ready. And I now want to tell you how I got rushed to the hospital earlier this year. Uh, it all started when I visited my friend in Lofoten in January, February. We had a lot of fun and everything was great, but I felt something was off in my body. I was thirsty all the time, which is really uncommon for me. That's the first sign that I thought this is kind of strange. And then maybe not so unnatural, I had to go to the toilet all the time. I didn't think much of it at the time because I thought maybe it was the climate in Lofoten that I wasn't used to it or maybe it was because I was out all night watching the Northern Lights and something like that. But then I got back home and I noticed that this strange thirst didn't really end. I saw this as a sign to maybe contact my doctor. After I got an appointment, I had to wait a few weeks. Uh, and during this time, I also managed to get COVID. I finally got to my doctor and she was really nice and calm, but she told me she had some concerns and wanted to take a few tests. We took a lot of tests and she told me that my blood sugar was a lot higher than normal and she was going to have to take a phone call to a specialist. And so I waited until she got back and she told me that I most likely had diabetes type 1. Her concerns was that I had high blood acids, also called ketones, which left untreated can lead to unconsciousness and eventually lead to death. So she told me I needed to go to the hospital as soon as possible. This was a shock. I was stunned and didn't really know what to do. I felt really alone. I didn't have time to tell my family. My doctor was really kind and offered me a hug and comforted me in every way she could. I was also allowed to sit in an empty room to gather my thoughts and just gather myself until the taxi came to pick me up. All the employees were really nice and really supportive. They told me that diabetes 1 was absolutely something you could live with and that was really nice to hear at the moment. When the taxi came, I silently cried in the back seat. I felt really confused. Uh, I didn't really understand the seriousness in how bad my condition were. So I had to wait until I got to the hospital to get some more information. I was brought into the endocrinology clinic and this is where I spend the next few days. I was hooked up to quite a few machines and I got intravenously. The first night they also woke me up every hour to take my blood sugar just to make sure I was okay. Everything was still really confusing as the nurses couldn't tell me all that much and the doctors were busy. I had to wait a few days until I was able to talk to a diabetes nurse and I was still a little bit confused on how my everyday life would look like but I also decided that I didn't want to look at this just in a negative way so I decided that I tried to do something positive about this. So I made up my mind that I wanted to be more healthy and eat more consciously, as well as starting to exercise as this is really positive on my diabetes. And at this point, I also had a huge secret. A few months back, I had applied and gotten accepted into a reality program, uh, which would take place in South Africa in just a few weeks. So a reality show isn't really something I would have considered earlier, but um, my best friend Malin, as some of you might remember from my Savon trip, I had also applied and she had told the casting team about me. So they wanted to have a quick chat and 
I was curious what their visions were and they convinced me it sounded really nice and something I wanted to be a part of. So I understood that this was going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity for me and I was at a low point in my life. I had had a tough year and things didn't go as planned. So I knew that this was going to help me bring me back up again. I knew that I needed a change in my life and I needed to get to know some new people uh, that was more similar to me. And this would be a great opportunity to be able to meet such people. My first thoughts when I got the news of my newly discovered diabetes was how this was going to affect this plan. And I really didn't want this to ruin it. So I talked to my doctors and they told me that I could join the program as long as I had the mentality for it. I also told them that we had a nurse on site, which was comforting for both them and me. And in my mind, I didn't want this to stop me. I knew that thinking no to joining this program would probably have broken me. And I didn't want my diabetes to have that power over me. So I was convinced that I wanted to join and I could do this. And I knew that, of course, it would have some effect on the program as well. Uh, and I think maybe it, you are able to see it. I really had a lovely time and such great people, both in the crew and the cast. So I knew accepting my spot on the show was going to have a much more positive effect for me than negative. Especially now we are nearing the premiere and it's going to go on TV. And I think watching this would be really hard for me. So I'm really glad that I was able to go. I don't really know how it would affect me if I think no, but I'm quite sure that I would have dwelled and overthink my diabetes. I gotten to meet some really awesome people. After I got back from the hospital, I had to take a few days, gather myself, start to know how the insulin would work. And then I had to pack and I was finally on my way to South Africa with the best people you can think of. So this was a really hard vlog for me to make. Um, but I feel like it's important to talk about these things and I hope you liked it as well. So this is it for now. Thank you for watching and I hope I see you next time. Bye.